Hey everyone, and welcome to Fox 2 Aviation Podcast. I'm your host, Miles, and today we're going to go in-depth and talk about the Russian-built MiG-31. Uh, don't mind me today, I have a little bit of some allergies, so I might be sniffling a little bit. Just go ahead and ignore that. And uh, before any of that, let's start with some awesome news with the developmental of the MiG-31. So, what we need to know about the MiG-31, it was an interceptor. It scared the living hell out of the Western powers. In the By the 1970s, Soviet air defenses were in a pitiful state with the Russia's Tu-114 Moss AWACS platform, which was available only in very small numbers and was of limited capability while the vast network of SAMs had progressed little since the U-2 of Francis Gary Powers had been shot down. With the work on overhauling Soviet air defenses with was accorded a high priority, and a development began on two new AWACS platforms. But with the most ambitious of these was the new MiG-29 Fulcrum, intended as a tactical fighter. So before the MiG-31, we also had the MiG-29, the MiG-25, and the MiG, and a lot of other MiGs and Sukhois. Although often assumed to have originated as an interim aircraft or as best as an insurance policy in case of the failure of the Sukhoi 27, the MiG actually represented an attempt to produce a long range interceptor which would be capable of operating independently during ground control. It was a two crew fighter and also enhanced mission performance in hostile electronic warfare environment and not just a low risk, quick to develop Sukhoi alternative. The MiG-31 airframe seems to have originated from the that of the YE-155 model research derivative of the MiG-25 intended to explore ways of increasing the speed and range. It had been intended to undertake a two-stage program, first fitting with the 29,761 foot-pound R-115BF-2300 engines of the standard MiG-25, and then revising the aircraft structure to raise the Mach limit. But with the new engines, service ceiling was, rain, was raised to 79,396 feet and range increased to 1,193 miles, or 1,559 miles. Unfortunately, with the engine developing, took longer than anticipated, and the second stage of the program, covered structural and material changes, was shelved. With the, with the two model prototypes still the role to play, however, they were converted to serve as test beds. Under the new design of this airplane, the designation going from the YE-155 Mike model to the YE-266 Mike model, on May 17, 1975, Chief Test Pilot Alexander set time to height records of 2 minutes and 34.28 seconds to 8,202 feet. That's so damn fast. That's literally going 2,500 meters in 4 minutes that high. That's impressive. His second one, which he beat, was 4 minutes and 11.78 seconds to 13,123 feet. His deputy took the took the 9,843 feet record with a time of 3 minutes and 9.8 seconds. So 0 to 60 in your car has nothing on the, prop, the capabilities of the MiG-31 Foxhound. On the 22nd of July, 1977, Alexander took two more records, those for altitude, achieving at 121,653 feet with 2,204 and 4,409 pound payloads. When this was set a record, the absolute altitude was 123,524 feet. That's, that's, that's insane. <laughs> that, that's mind-blowing in, in any aviation person's mind. I mean, the Russians knocked this design out of the park. Where they designed, they wanted to design something that can fly super high and intercept, but also be a really good reconnaissance airplane. This is going back to what I stated with the Western worries of this airplane. With the West really scared of this Super MiG 25, when Lieutenant Victor Blanco de defected to Japan in an early model MiG 25, he described a MiG 25 with a stronger airframe, that carried faster, faster speeds, more weight, and record breaking altitude with the mig-31 which was more of a western name for it the mig-31 in 1977 it was observed by a satellite destroying a target at below 200 feet at some 12 miles 12 mile range while itself 
at 20,000 feet. With, with this being reported seemed to have been mistaken, the West was, however, taking the MiG-31 seriously, and some began to overestimate the new interceptor. At this time, the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for Defense, Donald Latham, went as far as to describe the MiG-31 as being superior to any existing U.S. fighter, including the F-15. I think the MiG-31 outmatches the F-15 in a lot of things. Yeah, the F-15 has its, its capabilities and its strengths, but at the same time, though, I mean, the F the, the MiG-31 just knocks anything out of its, its hand with altitude and speed. At least one MiG-31 out of the seventh that were designed during this time was fitted with streamlined cylindrical ESM pods. These were later replaced by anti-flutter weights. So these winglets were designed for anti-fluttering. Fluttering is when the aircraft wings will start to, to move like crazy, going like an accordion effect where the flight services, the, the fuselage, everything will start buffeting. Start going all over the place. The large winglets are thought to be related to some form of MiG-31 aerodynamic development, and with these, these large winglets created better aerodynamics and speed. With the production of the MiG-31 commenced in 1979, these were not without incident, and numerous modifications were incorporated in the production aircraft. One of the major improvements was the repositioning of the air brakes underneath the intake duct rather than on the shoulders of the intake ducts. As a mechanic, this is really interesting because a lot of the airplanes are they put them underneath, they put them usually air brakes are usually either on top of the wings or they're underneath the in inlets. The, that's to create more drag and more lift and easier diffusion through the air coming through the engines. By comparison with the MiG-25, the MiG-31 has larger and more complex engine intakes, and these have been tailored to reduce airflow problems and reduce fuel consumption during missions. Initial trials revealed the need for in-flight refueling and a crude semi-retractable probe was added to the port fuselage. Now, this was not fitted to the early the earlier aircraft. This is fitted to more of the later aircraft. Once mastered, the capabilities of the MiG-31 soon became apparent to the Soviet Union. Flights of more than five hours were now possible, coupled with a highly sophisticated radar. Capabilities such as these saw that the early MiG-31s were quickly developed, deployed to Russia's frontline interceptor bases and were huge, huge targets for American fighters. Now, when the 31 had plenty of variants, with the passage of time, the shortcomings of the original MiG-31 became more evident. As the latest incar incarnation of the Foxhound, the most effective model, the 31 Mike, became one of the most effective interceptors. At this time, any angle of the MiG-31 Mike, the 057 displays the redesigned nose wheel doors, repositioned landing taxi lights, and wingtip ECM pods, that helped to identify the latest latest variant. So that's just one of the few that developed the 31 Mike higher than a lot of the other aircraft. Now, to this aircraft, this the seventh MiG-31 Mike built and was the first seen by Western sources in 1992, almost 20 years later at this point. It is appear, it does appear, which remains shrouded in secrecy, what really is going on with this airplane. Bone prototype appears to have been destroyed in 1991, though. Both China and India have expressed interest in the project, but development has been delayed by serious funding problems. At its present, it appears unlikely that the MiG-31 Mike will enter operational service with the Russian forces. At this time, the MiG-31 is with Kazakhstan and with Russia. This airplane had an uncertain future for most of its time, but with the performances and the, the similarities with the Alpha, the Alpha model, the A model, it has differences. Like I said earlier, the differences with the taxing, the landing gear, and the repositioning also came with differences in armament. The R-77 medium-range air-to-air missile was the biggest upgrade to this airplane. This appearance of this airplane, when the missiles were put on, it has a designated range of 80 miles and has inertial guidance and terminal active radar homing. That's fascinating. That's very far, too. Designed to attack maneuvering targets, the R-77 features unusual rear control fins to dub the potato mashers. Now, these rear control fins really do look like potato mashers. They, they come out, they squeeze together during flight. These missiles are also retrofitted for the MiG-29s and the Sukhoi-27s. The undercarriage was another big new feature for this airplane. The MiG-31s featured the three-piece nose wheel doors, with landing taxi lights incorporated into the front door. In favor of the simpler 
two-piece doors. As a result, the landing lights are now mounted on the, the undercarriage Oleo strut itself. So a lot of like a lot of airplanes now, a lot of the corporate jets have the Oleo have the or they have the lights mounted on the Oleo struts. Now we go to the R-37 long-range missile that was designed to replace the MiG-31's R-33 weapon. The R-37 is built by the by the Viempel NPO Missile Design Bureau. Similar to the AIM-54 Charlie Phoenix Alpha Alpha Mike, which is also air-to-air missile, it has a range of around 93 miles and uses inertial, inertial guidance for mid-course with an active radar seeker for the terminal phase of the engagement. The MiG-31 Mike carries six of these. They carry six of these massive aircraft missiles. The missile's rear control fins fold to ease clearance during landing, which is crazy. The, the amount of fascinating facts with this airplane just keeps piling up. And the Mike model definitely is a great upgrade to the, the Alpha and the older models. The Sabre model. Never a particularly easy aircraft to fly. The MiG-31 suffered from poor handling qualities, especially at high angles of attack. This has been rectified somewhat on the MiG-31 Mike by the addition of the large leading edge root extensions dubbed Sabre in Russian, just as after the huge air intakes. With these added on, this, this is also good for aerodynamics. They're kind of like little fences. Fences as in fences and in when you're putting them on an airplane, the fences are on the wings usually to create more and less buffeting for the control surfaces. As I said earlier, the wingtip pods were added for ECM and ESM equipment. They feature large vertical fins and dielectric panels, and they are similar in design to those seen on the SU-30s. The weapon stations had a total of six weapon stations. The MiG-31 had six of these. The MiG-31 Mike has two extra stations semi-recessed under the fuselage, plus an additional pair of hard points under the wings, and these may be plumbed for carriage of external fuel tanks. And most, most importantly, a lot of these fighter jets have in-flight refueling probes. And these are retrofitted with semi-retractable in-flight refueling probes mounted below the front cockpit on the port side. With an airplane like this, you have to remember that they designed it to engage as many targets as they could. They designed it to attack as many targets as they could at very high altitudes. So... Let's look at the dimensions of this airplane. The dimensions wingspan 44 feet, two inches, including the probe, which is about 74 feet, five and a quarter inches. Overall, the height was at 20 feet. The wing aspect ratio is 2.94, with the wing area at 663 square feet. The power plant, two D3030 F6 turbofans, and each rated at 34,170 foot-pounds with afterburning pretty powerful engines with the weights being empty at 48,115 with internal fuel at 36,045 and maximum takeoff weight on internal fuel at 90,390 foot pounds. The maximum takeoff weight with twin underwing tanks at 101,850 pounds and maximum takeoff weight at 114,640,000 pounds. Now, like I said before, MiG-31 is a record breaker. So these performance addings and these performance facts still blow my mind. With the maximum permitted Mach 2 point number at 2.3 at altitude, the maximum level speed at 57,400 feet at 1,865 miles an hour, speed at, at sea level 932 miles an hour. The cruising speed at Mach 0.85 at the service ceiling at 67,600 feet. So at 67,600 feet, that is the maximum service ceiling for the 31 mic. The range, the radius of an action with the maximum internal fuel in four R-33 missiles at Mach 2.35 at 447 miles. The ferry range of maximum internal fuel and without armament at 2,050 miles. And the maximum endurance unrefueled is at three hours and 36 minutes of flight time. Now, we discussed earlier how this scared the living crap out of the Western countries. Now, with its uncertain future, despite its system upgrades, the MiG-31 Mike has not been described as a core program. Even though these facts that I'm reading right now, this is an older, older type of reference. With the newer stuff, the Russians have been putting effort into keeping this airplane very, very upgraded and up to date. 
That being said, India is is a possible production partner. That is not true anymore. Like I said earlier, Kazakhstan and Russia are the only known sources to actually pilot these airplanes. The, the whole thing with India fell through, and that's the only information we know at this time with that. Russian air defense, 100%. With this aircraft being added to the spectrum, the spectrum of intercepting aircraft, it replaces the older MiG-25. It replaces some parts of the MiG-29. It is a high-ceiling, fast airplane that can take out its targets quick. That is one of the reasons why I like this airplane and the other reason why it should be added to a lot of people's favorite airplane list because of its capabilities and record-breaking speeds. All these other variants that were types of this airplane, there are plenty of variants. And like I said before, the mic is the most well-known, but there are tons of variants of this airplane. Of course, the prototype modification of the early MiG-31 with its first flight on 16th September 1975. This was the YE-155 Mike Papa. Now, with the MiG-31 coming into production, the first variant which entered in serial production, 349 of these aircraft were built. It's fascinating. That's a, that's a lot for this type of airplane. Now, the export value of this airplane was offered to a lot of countries. Finland, Syria uh, were some of them. India was another one. But they fell through for different reasons. Finland fell through. They didn't take up the offer and chose the new fighter from the selection program that they were in, inspecting on. And Syria ordered eight of them, but they were suspended because of lack of Syrian funds. Now, the development of the more comprehensive advanced version of the mic was, was brought up earlier, which was one of their big adjustments to the earlier models. The MiG-31D, by chance, was a two-aircraft that was designated as a Type 31D model that were manufactured as dedicated anti-satellite models with ballast in the nose instead of radars. Flat fuselage undersurfaces were also added and had large winglets above the below the wingtips. These were also equipped with anti-satellite weapons, space weapons. So, to be honest, that sounds pretty badass. Coming from a kid who loves sci-fi stuff, they were equipped with the Empel ASAT missiles, also known as anti-satellite weapons. The MiG-31 Lima Lima model, special modification, was used as a flying lab for testing of ejection seats. Not many people know that. You have to have an aircraft to test a lot of these issues. The two-seat MiG-31-01 Delta Zulu model, the two-seat all-weather, all-altitude interceptor, when fitted the air-to-air -air refueling probe, 100 produced of the DZ variant. So these were more of an all-weather variant that are probably one of the most produced out of all the variants. Of course, the MiG-31B had the upgraded avionics set on it. The MiG-31 Echo, export version of the B with simplified avionics, and never entered into serial production, though, which, assuming it's probably used for training purposes today. The MiG-31 Bravo Sierra designated applied to Type 01 Delta Zulu when converted to the MiG-31 standard. So, with the new standards and everything like that, after passing state testing in 08, this modernized variant of MiG-31 Bravo was approved for introduction into the Air Force of Russia. With the Bravo mic being the main one, 50 planes are modified to the MiG-31 Bravo mic because of its big modernization. The efficiency is 2.6 times greater. This is all from Wikipedia for this section. 2.6 times greater, I would say three times greater from the, the facts that are being read. Maximum detection range for air targets was increased to the upgrade of 200, 320 kilometers. So an extra air target range of 200 miles. So when this airplane was talked to an interceptor, it is literally one of the godfathers of intercepting aircraft. It broke the world record while spending seven hours and four minutes in the air while covering the distance of 8,000 kilometers at 5,000 miles. An upgrade of the Bravo Sierra version, its latest, latest modernization, so the MiG-31 Bravo Sierra mic was the upgraded version of the Bravo Sierra. It had any ship and air-to-ground missiles adding on to this, and the main visible difference between the Bravo Sierra and the Bravo Sierra mic is the adding of the rear-view periscope above the front cockpit canopy. The MiG-31 Kilo was a variant of the Bravo mic, but it was able to carry hypersonic Kinzhal air launch ballistic missiles, which <laughs> there's a picture that I'm going to put on here of that, and it's fascinating. It is really cool looking. 
There were 10 aircraft modified by 2018 with the modification with removed APU for air-to-air missiles. The aircraft gained a sole rank of an attack aircraft. There are, of course, a bunch of other stock variants. The MiG-31 Fox, which was a fighter bomber intended to use for TV, radar, and laser-guided ASM weapon systems. Never entered production. The MiG-31 Fox Echo, planned export version of the MiG-31 Fox. Never entered production. The MiG-31 India, proposed modification for air-launched orbit of small spacecraft. I cannot wait to see that. With the small spacecraft payload of 350 pounds. The MiG-31 modified into launch production platform of the 08 anti-satellite missile, and they were converted in September 2018 to be able to hold ASAT missiles. Now, we look into a bunch of these, these covers of these missiles, and, you know, you think this, air, this airplane has is, is knocked everything out of the park. It is fascinating. It scares the living shit out of the Western powers. It is a fantastic airplane, and it has a good armament. And that's why when you see a MiG-31 and the information it has, research about it. It's got amazing feats feats and facts. And it is one of my favorite airplanes. And it has been on top of my list for a long time I wanted to cover. Thanks, guys, and have a fantastic night. And I cannot wait to add more episodes. And remember, Fox 2.